All right, guys, welcome to your 31st video. And in this video, like I said, we're going to be adding a list selection listener. Basically, what this applet is going to do is wait for the user to click one of these options inside the list. They don't care if it like if they like click the title or something. They only want to wait and see if they click one of these options inside the list, like this one or this one. Now, in order to do that, what we need to do is add a list selection listener. So go ahead and write the name of your list, which is main list. And I easily could have typed that. And add a method called add list selection listener to it. Just like that. Now, inside this parameter, let me see if it will tell you in the documentation. Uh, la, 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 la. Well, I'll just go ahead and tell you it's my kind of what I'm here for, isn't it? What we need to do is we need to add an anonymous inner class, basically the functionality to wait for the list itself. So the first thing you do is add a new list selection listener. And by the way, I don't really like anonymous inner class. Is this like a class inside of a class inside of a class? And there are easier ways to get around this, but for now, would I spell something wrong? list selection listener oh, I just think I'm not done coding it yet so inside here we add a method called value change so public void value changed and inside this parameter you pass in the event which is list selection event and we'll just name this event all right, easy enough. So basically what we have going on here is we added a listener to that list, basically a bit of code that sits on that list and waits for something to happen. Now whenever a user pretty much clicks anything on that list, then it's gonna call this method value changed. Now what do we wanna happen inside value changed? Well, what we wanna do is basically say, okay, whatever option you clicked on, go to that website simple enough but we need to do it in kind of a weird way so the first thing you need to do is make an object just name it object and set it equal to main list which is the list that you know we're listening on and we'll make a method called get value man I wanted it to pop up get value selected now or wow I messed that up get selected value there we go now what this method does is it gets the title of the website so for example what this is going to do is if you click on the new boston.org what get selected value does is it is going to grab the string the new boston.org so that's what this um line of code does and it's going to store it in this variable called object so now what we can do is remember the point of this program is pretty much to have the browser take us to that URL so basically what we can use with that information is gonna say okay this title the new boston.org is associated with a URL so wherever you see this title associated with the URL that's where you want to go so next what we need to do is we need to make another um, variable that's going to hold the URL object and we'll just name this new document set this equal to website info because remember website info is the hash map that has the information of the title and the URL so you guys are going to see once I'm done get object so right now, if you guys can't tell what's going on, what we did in this line, like I said, is we grabbed the title of whatever was, I'll just say it's the new Boston.org. So whenever we grab the title of the new Boston.org, what this line of code does is it's gonna say, okay, we wanna get the, pretty much we wanna get the URL where the new boston.org is associated with now the url of the new boston.org is http the new boston you know backslash backslash the full url that your browser can go to so now now that full url is stored in a variable called new document 
Why? Why do you need to store it in a URL instead of a string? Because in your Java program, it can only go to URLs. You can't go to a string. You can't go to a string called what website do you want to visit? You can't go to a string called tuna fish sandwich. You can only go to a valid URL. So that's why we need to convert it into a URL object. So before we can just say, okay, go to this URL, what we actually need to do is figure out what browser or what the user is using to run this applet. So in order to do that, and once you guys see, see this bit of code, you guys are going to understand what's going on. Applet context browser equals get context. All right, now hopefully I don't have any errors. Now what this line of code does is it gets applet context. So for example, if I'm running this applet inside Chrome, which I am right now, then it's gonna say, okay, the browser is equal to Chrome. That's essentially what it does. And why do I need to do that? Because whenever I'm going to a URL, you just can't say go to a URL. It needs to say, what do you want to use to go to that URL? So I wanna use that browser which is Chrome in my case maybe it's different you know if you're on Internet Explorer which hopefully you aren't show document and the new document is this so let me guys type talk you through this one last line and you can see what's going on so well I might as well talk you guys through what we did we basically added a listener so anytime a user made a selection in that list it said okay run the method value changed. So this method gets ran anytime the user selects something. So whenever they selected, you know, the new Boston.org, what happens is the first thing it did is get the title, which is the new Boston.org. The second thing it did is it got the URL from that title because remember in our HTML file, each one was associated with another one, or in the hash map rather. Now once it has that URL, converted from a string it could go ahead and find out what browser you're using and use your browser to basically take you to that URL and in order to you know take someone to a URL you need to use the method show document which basically says okay show the web page itself so that's what that does and if you're saying okay where the heck did you know all of this crap come in, something is not making sense here. Well, the reason things aren't perfectly tied together right now is because we didn't grab the info, info from the HTML file. So in the next tutorial, what I'm going to be showing you guys how to do is actually stealing the info from the HTML file that we made in the very first tutorial, and we're going to be populating this hash map and array list. And once you do, once you learn that, you guys are going to be good to go learn all about you know making a browser within a browser so thank you guys for watching and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video